We get bored of our childhood. We sacrifice our well-being long to be children, rush to grow up, leading individuals to prioritize their careers and financial goals over their health. Worrying about the future is overshadowed by the need to recover long to be children. Again, this forward-focused mindset can prevent us from present moment. Hey y'all, what's happening? I'm Rescue, tour entrepreneur, brand strategist, investor, and a philanthropist. It's my hope that this video helps inspire you to take action now. No, I'm not here to impress you, but to impress upon you that it is all possible to elevate higher. So, let's get right into it. This is your life guide. A wise man once said, what surprises me most about humankind is that we get bored of our childhood, rush to grow up and long to be children again, that we lose our health to make money and then we lose our money to restore our health, that by thinking anxiously about the future we forget the present, such that we live neither in the present nor the future that we live as if we were never going to die and die as if we never lived. This quote encapsulates profound observation about the human condition, highlighting paradoxes, ironies that defines our lives. It speaks to the cyclical nature of our desire, the misplaced priorities, and neglects the present moment. Let's dive into each segment of this court to understand its deeper meaning and implications. Childhood and adulthood. We get bored of our childhood, rush to grow up and long to be children again. This reflects on the cyclical nature of human desire and satisfaction. In childhood, we are often eager to grow up, believing that adulthood brings freedom autonomy and the fulfillment of our wishes. As children, we often feel restricted by rules, long for the day where we can make our own decisions. The idea of adulthood is romanticized as a state of ultimate freedom and capability. However, once we reach adulthood, we frequently find that Responsibilities and stresses of grown up life can be overwhelming. The freedoms we anticipated often comes with burdens as work, financial pressures, and complexities of personal relationships. The simplicity and innocence of childhood becomes a nostalgic ideal. We long for the carefree days when our biggest concerns were trivial compared to adult life. This longing is driven by the realization that adulthood with all its supposed freedom also comes with its own set of constraints and anxieties. The freedom to make our own decisions comes with the weight of these consequences and the autonomy we sought can lead to feelings of isolation or inadequacies. Thus, we find ourselves yearning for the simplicity and security of childhood, creating a cyclical pattern of desire and dissatisfaction. Now, health and wealth. We lose our health to make money, then lose our money to restore our health. This part of this quote highlights the irony and often tragic exchange between health and wealth in the pursuit of financial success and material wealth. Many people sacrifice their physical and mental well-being. Long working hours, high stress levels, unhealthy lifestyles, and neglect of self-care are common in the relentless chase of success and economic security. The modern world often equates success with wealth, leading individuals to prioritize their careers and financial goals over their health. This can result in burnout, chronic illnesses, and diminished quality of life. 
The irony lies in the fact that once significant health is accumulated, it is often spent on medical treatments, therapies, and or other measures to regain lost health. The cycle is paradoxical. We sacrifice our well-being to earn money, only to later spend that money to try to regain our health. This highlights a fundamental misalignment in priorities. The pursuit of wealth at the expense of health can lead to a hollow victory where the fruit of one's labor is overshadowed by the need to recover what was lost in the present and the future. By thinking anxiously about the future, we forget the present such that we live in neither the present nor the future. This segment addresses the human tendency to be preoccupied with the future at the expense of the present moment, anxiety about what lies ahead, whether it's career goals, personal aspirations, or fear of potential hardships can dominate our thoughts and actions. This forward-focused mindset can prevent us from fully experiencing and appreciating the present moment. When we are constantly worrying about the future, we miss out on joys and opportunities that the present moment offers. This creates a state of living where we are neither fully engaged with the present nor truly prepared for the future. We are caught in liminal space, perpetually planning and fearing what is to come while neglecting the here and now. The consequence is diminished quality of life. The present moment, with all its potential for joy, connection and fulfillment, sleeps away unnoticed. This perpetual state of anticipation and anxiety can lead to feelings of dissatisfaction and unfulfillment as we never fully truly experience life in its immediacy. Now, life and death. We live as if we were never going to die and die as if we've never lived. This profound observation speaks to the denial avoidance of mortality. That is common in human behavior. Many people live their lives as if they have infinite amount of time, postponing dreams, relationships, personal fulfillment, and so on and so forth. The reluctance to confront our mortality leads to a lack of urgency in pursuit of meaningful experiences and goals. This quote suggests that we often fail to appreciate the finite nature of life. By avoiding thoughts of death, we delay the pursuit of what truly matters. This can result in a life that feels unfulfilled. As the things that bring genuine satisfaction and happiness are continually postponed. You see, when death finally arrives, it often catches us unprepared and we may realize that we haven't truly lived. This realization can lead to regret for the things left undone and experiences missed. This statement calls for a more mindful approach to life, one that acknowledges the reality of mortality and motivates us to live fully and meaningfully in the time we have. Reflection and application. One, embracing the present moment. Think about it. This emphasizes on the present moment is a call to mindfulness. Mindfulness practices such as meditation, conscious breathing can help as stay grounded in the present moment. It reduces anxiety about the future. By focusing on the here and now, we can fully experience life and find joy in everyday moments. Two, balancing health and ambition. 
Finding a balance between career ambition and personal well-being is crucial. This involves setting boundaries, prioritizing self-care, recognizing that health is a form of wealth. A balanced life allows for both professional success and personal fulfillment. Number three, cultivating childlike wonder. You see, when we reconnect, reconnecting with the wonder and the curiosity of childhood, it can enhance our appreciation of life. Engaging in playful activities, pursuing hobbies, and maintaining a sense of curiosity can help us retain the joy and spontaneity often lost in adulthood. Number four, confronting mortality. Acknowledging the finite nature of life can inspire us to live more intentionally. This might involve setting meaningful goals, nurturing relationships, and taking risks that align with our values and passions. By confronting our mortality, we can create a sense of urgency that motivates us to live fully. Number five, redefining success to include well-being relationships and personal growth can shift our priorities success is not solely measured by wealth or status but by the quality of the experiences and the fulfillment of our values in conclusion this serves as a powerful reminder of the ironies and paradoxes that characterize human life it challenges us to reflect on our priorities, embrace the present, and live with intention. By addressing the insights offered by this court, we can cultivate a more balanced, fulfilling, and mindful approach to life. In summary, the message invites us to reconsider how we approach life's journey. It encourages us to find a balance between the innocence and curiosity of childhood and responsibilities of adulthood, to prioritize health over wealth, to live in the present while planning the future, and to confront our mortality in the way that inspires us to live fully. Embracing these principles can lead to a more enriched, meaningful life, free from regrets of unfulfilled potentials and anxieties of uncertain future well that's about it for now remember knowledge is power but the application of knowledge is powerful you have greatness within you tap into it thanks for watching really i mean that i'm rescued and this is your life guide